Greetings, my name is Ryan Nitsch. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Rick from Red Hat. Rick, say hi. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So my name is Rick, or Ricardo Garcia. I work as a technical marketing manager at Red Hat, and I'm mostly focused on SAP customers. So, Rick, I've got a bit of a problem. Uh, most customers I deal with are migrating their SAP investments onto AWS. Many of them have realized that they can automate that migration process or the implementation phase of any migration by using something like Red Hat Ansible as That's an automation correct. platform. So they're, they're taking the uh, MV implementation phase. Right. And, and in my mind, the implementation phase is, is two processes. There is the initial planning side of it, Correct. and then there is the actual yeah, implementation, the install yeah. and config itself. Right. And Ansible is a fantastic tool over here because it allows me to take those playbooks, I can deploy AWS resources, I can exactly. deploy uh, all of the underlying infrastructure, the compute layer, and then do SAP install and config as well. As well. Does Ansible play any meaningful role in the planning phase itself? Well, when you're doing all the resource calculation, for example, when you're uh, doing the architectural designs, for example, if you need to calculate uh, resource and do sizing, uh, you can use Ansible for that as well, definitely. I don't understand. To me, as, uh, Ansible is, is a, it's a, uh, like a text file. It has a yeah. playbook where I describe the step-for-step -step configurations. That doesn't, in my brain, translate to sizing. Well, the thing is that you can create your, if you want, templates uh, for Ansible, and that's how you're sizing your system. So, for example, if you're deploying, deploying one system once, and you know that, that it's a development system, for example, and you know that for all your development systems, you will need the same type of, of sizing. That's something that will live in Ansible as content. In, it will be reusable. Okay, so if you're creating cookie cutter like building blocks, yes. you've got different templates for each of Definitely. those sizings. Definitely. Right, sorry, I misunderstood you slightly. Now, now the, as, as shiny and cool as this is, I don't see this as the hard part. Uh, mm -hmm. My customers would go and, and implement this maybe uh, in one implementation, they might deploy two or three environments, non-prod, prod staging. Mm -hmm. If I was an SI sort of integrator, we'd repeatedly mm -hmm. be deploying this for different customers. I think the real work starts after implementation, and it really starts with something like a, uh, an ongoing maintenance, the operational aspects. And that's completely accurate. Mostly, I'm coming from the SAP world, SAP Basis Administrator. So the amount of time that you really spend on taking care of the systems that you have deployed is much longer, much bigger than the actual implementation. So deployment, as you said, unless you're a system integrator, you're going to deploy once, twice, not many more. Or even for a system integrator, you're not going to be deploying every day. How, how, how horrible is this journey? If mm. I think operations, I'm thinking uh, maintenance from a patch management, Absolutely. update perspective, uh, backup and recovery processes. Right. Do we want to break those into two different phases or do we bundle them together? I think we can say operations in a, in a big okay. box and that's it. And uh, of course, I will add something very typical to, uh, uh, to, to SAP systems, which are the SAP system copies or system refreshes. That's for, uh, for basis administrator, for SAP administrators, is the, one of the biggest pains. So that is when customers need to refresh the data from production into, for example, their quality system, uh, so that they always have the latest data and they can, they can keep doing their tests with the latest data. So typically a customer will want to do a refresh maybe every three months, six months, it depends on the customer. That's a very big task. It implies not only database copy, but also there are a lot of pre-tasks and post-tasks that are quite complicated. So for me, that's one of the main achievements of Ansible. You, you, you mentioned something that stands out to me. You mentioned complexity here. Yes. Now, whenever I think of a manual process where there's complexity, there's a risk of not doing it properly. There's Absolutely. a risk of two different people doing it. Uh, so, consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, what we say is complexity and uh, element of, of risk coming from that complexity. So. Ansible as a way of automating things. I'm under the impression that much of this 
could be automated by Ansible. How true is that statement? And that's completely true. So for example, you've mentioned backup. That can be covered with Ansible perfectly. You can write uh, Ansible playbooks to, to, to back up your databases, your whole system, operating system level backup. Uh, for updates as well, you can use Ansible, but also if we are talking about using rel hosts, so you have deployed the rel operating system on your Amazon EC2 instances, you can also do the updates with a, a smart management, which is another part, another uh, uh, part of the jigsaw puzzle. Uh, well, what you're talking about is, in my mind, fleet management. I could, for right. example, have a, a, a collection of EC2 instances, all of them running, uh, let's take an operating system like a Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And on each of these, if this is something like SAP for HANA, this would probably be RHEL for SAP. Correct. Um, is, is HANA the most commonly used implementation? Well, it's a database that all customers will need to have by 2027. So, yeah, I mean, there's still many customers on all the legacy databases that are supported by SAP, but they so need to change to I've got HANA. this fleet of, of, of systems, and if we take uh, Ansible over here, mm -hmm. I could literally have my playbooks applied to the entire mm -hmm. fleet consistently. You talk about playbooks and all of these automations. What I'm hearing is a poor human being who has to take each of these things and go and write a very painful playbook around their own processes. Mm -hmm. Or is it simpler than that and they can just take a pre-built one? Or you can take a pre-built one and do customizations to it. So there are some playbooks that are, uh, are supported by Red Hat and uh, they are already written and they're ready to use for any customer. It normally, for most, or well, for quite a few of the operations, you will need customized playbooks and maybe customers will write them themselves. Where, where do I get the existing playbooks from oh, to very accelerate this process? Right. So you can go to Automation Hub. That's where all the certified, uh, certified content for Ansible lives. Right. So you have access to the Automation Hub if you are using Ansible Automation Platform. So you have the subscription for that, you can use it. And as you know, you can use Ansible Automation Platform or consume it on AWS. And there are two modalities. So one is to consume it hourly, that's purely pay as you go. And then there's another one that is a, a commitment, a, a contract for 12 months. Uh, once it expires, it can it will automatically go to hourly consumption if the, the contract with AWS is not extended. Are those purchased directly through AWS, yes. like through a marketplace mm -hmm. listing? Yes, those two are through AWS a marketplace. So you can also do bring your own license, but you have it on AWS marketplace, and that's for Ansible automation platform, as we said. Now, um, previous engagement I did with a customer, uh, something came up called Galaxy. Right. What is Galaxy? Okay. Where does it fit in here? So Galaxy, Galaxy is the community version, if you will, of the Automation Hub. So Galaxy has, I won't say all the collections that exist in the world, but most of the collections that people have been testing. So when they get to a, a um, level of, of compliance, for example. So normally the journey of Ansible begins on GitHub. Uh, there the community versions of the playbooks and the roles are loaded. They get voting. When people have uh, used them successfully, they vote for them. When they get number of votes, they go to Galaxy. Galaxy is still community, but it's like an intermediate. It's not certified, not supported, if you will, uh, like Automation Hub, but still very sound and tested collections live in there. Okay, so, that, so they're functional. However, if I'm coming from a... Uh, a compliance or a governance perspective. Let's say I'm a financial institution right. and there's, there's risk in my business. It sounds to me as if there is greater trust and validation going the Ansible automation platform Definitely. route yes. instead of going the community Absolutely. route. Absolutely. Right. You want to make sure it's supported, certified, and more secure if you want. Uh, you will go to autom uh, Automation Hub, definitely. Okay, so the big thing for me here is, is Ansible is not just an automation platform for implementers, it's there from an operational aspect as well. I don't need to invest tremendous amount of time into creating each of these backup mm -hmm. playbooks. I can take things that have already been created right. and adapt them to my Absolutely. business. Yeah. 
this is something I believe everybody should be doing. Are we already seeing that or are we in the starting phases of people adopting this journey? Well, we're still seeing it. I mean, those of people have uh, adopted it, but we still need to make this uh, message come across to more people and, and, and see that all these assets are available and mostly to know that Ansible is not only for the implementation phase, but for me, for example, and for all the administrators, more importantly, for the operation phase. So that's something that we should make people more aware of. Okay, so two things right. here is, you know, from an AWS standpoint, I work with our professional services team, our sort of consulting wing, yeah. and they use a lot of infrastructure as code, AWS CloudFormation, mm -hmm. we've got AWS organizations, we've got account factories to stand up much of the AWS environment for a customer. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of automation there. Ansible really has the ability to complement that. Mm -hmm. But if I look at from a an application owning perspective, the application life cycles, mm -hmm. I've got developers writing code, putting that into a code repo. We can do the exact same thing here. We can achieve a degree of GitOps yeah, definitely. with Ansible. It, it, completely true, yes. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of value over here, not just automating things from end to end. Rick, thank you very much for joining us as always. Thank you, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for joining us.